Okay, good morning everyone and Hazak Baruch. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Monday morning as we are studying together Perashat Toledot. And we are introduced this week in our Perashat, Perashat Toledot, to the two children of Yitzchak and Rivka. They were twins. They were two peas in a pod. They came out identical, equal opportunity, very similar. And we see how they their lives played out in completely opposite directions where Yaakov came out to be a tzaddik, Esav unfortunately uh, turned out to be a rasha. And right in the beginning of the Pasuk, the rasha tell the, tells us that actually Yitzchak and Rivka, the two parents, uh, take sides. The Pasuk says right in the beginning, Vayehav Yitzchak et Esav kitzayid befiv. You know Yitzchak? You know who he liked more? You know who he loved? Vayehav Yitzchak et Esav. He loved Yitzchak. Uh, excuse me, Yitzchak loved Esav. Okay? So the father loves Esav. Esav was the hunter. Esav was the businessman. Esav was the one who was more aggressive. He was the shark. Yitzchak liked Esav. Rivka ohevet et Yaakov. And Rivka loves Yaakov. Okay, so here's a very interesting pasuk. It's right in the beginning of our parasha. When the parasha tells us that Yitzchak loved the Esav, the hunter, and, and Rivka loved the, um, the good, goody two-shoes. Yeah? Yaakov was Ishtam, Yoshevo Halim. And obviously, 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 the question really over here is, how could, how could Yitzchak prefer his son Esav because he feeds him food. Is that a reason to love a child? Imagine, just imagine for a second, you go to Rav Chaim Kanievsky. Okay? You ever heard of Rav Chaim Kanievsky? Biggest rabbi right now, let's say, arguably in Israel. You go to the biggest rabbi, whoever you like, whoever's your, you know, Baba Sali, you go to Hamavadia Yosef, Moroccan, Persian, Sfaradi, Ashkenaz, Hasidish, whatever you like, okay? You go to the biggest rabbi in the world. And you say, Rabbi, listen, I know I'm not allowed to ask these questions, but I'm going to ask, who's your favorite son? Who's your favorite? I know you have a lot of sons and they're all big rabbis. Which one's your favorite son? Who do you love? Well, very understandable if the rabbi says, oh, this son, he, he wrote the most books. I love him. If, if, you, if you push me into a corner, I mean, he's the one right now that's giving me the most nachat. That one, wow, I love him because he learns every day and he teaches hundreds of people on, on Zoom. He's my favorite. You ask, oh, the other one, he's giving classes and he's writing uh, answers on the craziest difficult questions in halakha. Imagine Rav Chaim Kanievsky said, you know, who's my favorite son? I love that one, Shloimi. You know why? Because Shloimi makes the best schnitzel. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Wow, what a schnitzel! Woo! Oh my god, just the oil and it's coming out. Oh my god, gosh, if you ever had a schnitzel, are you, are you kidding me? This is why you like that son because he makes a good schnitzel. This is what the Pasuk says. Vayehav Yitzchak et Esav Kitzayid Befif. Yitzchak loves Esav because he feeds him good game, gives him good huntings, good will hunting. Yeah, makes a nice shawarma. Come on, it's not something that we would expect from Yitzchak. Yitzchak's not a regular guy. Yitzchak's Avinu. He's the son of Abraham. He's one of the three Avot. We hope he has a little bit more depth than just a good tasty little uh, shawarma. That's a reason to favor Esav. So right away, right away, Rashi says, let me clarify for you what this means. Please don't be mistaken into thinking that Yitzchak was interested in a good piece of steak. None of that. You know what it means that he loved Esav? He loved Esav. This is going to be right here in Pasuk 28. And, there, and Rashi says, Kitzayid Befiv. Not that he fed his father good food. Not in the mouth of Yitzchak. 
there was good food in his mouth. No, 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 no. He loved Esav because Esav had in his mouth Tzaid. He had in his mouth huntings. What huntings did Esav have in his own mouth? Says Rashi, Shehayat Sad Oto Umeramehu Bidvarav. You know what it means? It means that Yitzchak loved Esav because Esav would fool his father Yitzchak with his mouth. We all know our rabbis tell us that Esav would come after spending a whole day out in the field and eating and drinking and doing nonsense. Esav would quickly walk by the Bet Midrash, the synagogue, the learning center. He would just peek his ear by the window, listen to exactly what the rabbis are learning, and he would walk home, and on the way home, he would make up a whole beautiful Gemara and questions and everything. And he would come home and he would say, Dad, this is what I learned. This is, the, this is what they said in the yeshiva today. And Yitzchak thought that his son went to school. He didn't know that Esav was playing hooky. Esav was very sharp. He would just look at the you know, cliff notes and he would know the whole book. This was the first uh, you know, cheat sheets. This is what Esav did. Not only that, but he would come and he would tell his father questions to give his father the impression that he was very religious. So as an example, he would ask his father, Dad, tell me, how does one give ma'asir tithe? How does one give ma'asir on salt? We know salt is not a food. Salt is an accessory. We don't need to give ma'asir on the salt. Technically, only give ma'asir on food. But Esav asks Dad, how do I give ma'asir on salt? He's giving his father the impression that he's chasid. What's a chasid? We're learning about Hasidut now in Mesilat Yasharim in the morning. A Hasid is someone who does more than the Halakha requires. That's what a Hasid is. So as an example, the Halakha is you only have to light one candle every night for eight nights of Hanukkah. But if you light every night one more, one more, one more, this is doing the mitzvah in the best way possible. That's Midat Hasidut. That's what Hasid means. We have to, and Mesilei Sharim warns this, he says, don't confuse the midah, the trait of Hasidut, with the movement of Hasidut that started a couple hundred years ago with the Baal Shem Tov. Nothing to do with each other. Hasidut that we're studying over here means doing the mitzvot in the best way possible. So technically I could buy a $35 etrog and I fulfilled my mitzvah, but Hasidut now tells me that I should buy the best etrog out there. Do I have to? No, but I want to. I want to do. So Esav would come back and he would ask his father's questions of Hasidut. As if showing his father that I'm doing, not only I'm keeping halakha, I'm doing more than the halakha. I'm not praying three times a day. I'm praying five times a day. I'm like the Arabs, dad. I'm praying every minute I have, right? This was the impression that Esav would give his father. And that's what it means that Yitzchak loved Esav because there was hunting in his mouth. Not that there was food in Yitzchak's mouth. That would be ridiculous to think that he would love his son because he's giving him a little bit of meat. It's not a, that's not worthy of, ya, of Yitzchak Avinu. Rather, it means that he loved Esav because Esav would fool him. Esav tricked his father, fooled ya, fooled ya, right? Right, Penn and Teller fool us. He fooled him. He fooled him into thinking that he was a very righteous person. And again, I'm not fooled. I still have a very hard time buying this. Is it possible that Yitzchak couldn't see through it? Was he that gullible? Was he so naive? I mean, today, a guy goes to a rabbi, big rabbi, and the rabbi sees right through him. He reads his forehead. I know what you did last night. You're not so religious. Don't sketch me. I, right? We all know the stories. Big rabbis, they could see right through fakers. Is it possible Yitzchak couldn't see through this charade? So however you explain, whether he gave him good food or he fooled him with his mouth and he asked questions giving the impression that he's a chassid, is it really possible Yitzchak Avinu was so naive. 
Was he really not able to see through it? And Rivka was, you know. Rivka saw through it. And, okay, let's say you believe it. And let's say you bought it. And you believe that he's giving Ma'asir on. But at the end of the day, you, who you, who, he's killing, you got Yaakov. You got a son who is a scholar, who is a big Talmud Chacham. You prefer, even though you're right, he's doing mitzvot and he's, even if you believe all of his sketchness, but to, to prefer that over Yaakov, how could Yitzchak do such a thing? The answer of the year is given by the Be'er Yosef, book that we quote often, Rav Yosef Tzvi of Salant. And he begins by quoting the famous Rambam, in the Shemona Perakim, the Rambam has an introduction, different introductions to different parts of Shas. In one of his introductions, he says, and he quotes the famous Chachmei HaMehkar, philosophers. And the question really over here is, what's greater? Let me ask you this question. It's a question that I think we've discussed before. But what's greater? Is it greater for somebody who has a tendency to be bad, and controls the tendency? Or is it better someone whose tendency is easily for the good, immediately? Doesn't have a bad bone in his body. What's, what's preferred? What's a preferred type of person? Someone who is good-natured or someone who is bad-natured but suppresses it? So the Rambam quotes the philosophers who say that the Hasid Hanote Latov Mitzad Tibo, that someone who is good natured, who Yoter Hashuv, Veyoter Shalem, he is even greater and more praiseworthy and more complete than someone who controls his bad nature. Because the person that has a bad nature, Mitzad Tibo Utchunotav, someone who is Teva and his Tchunot, his character, Note Elahara, who's leaning to bad, but Kovesh et Yitzro. Someone who controls his evil ways, not as good as someone who's automatically in their nature a good person. That's what the Rambam says. Uh, that's what the Rambam quotes the philosophers that say. However, the Rambam proves, and he continues over here, that actually from our rabbis, we know the exact opposite is true. Our rabbis tell us, Many different statements, but one of them is Ezehu Gibor HaKobesh Et Yitzro True strength is not someone who's good automatically You know, you have two kids in class, one of them is a good kid You know, we call them uh, maybe nerds They don't want to ever cause trouble They always, you know, every word the teacher says They're listening, good morning students, good morning students You know, whatever, whatever's, you know, being taught They listen, they don't bother, they get hundreds on every test Okay But then you have the kid that really loud and noisy and troublemaker And he's controlling himself not to cause any ruckus Our rabbis tell us that that person Who chashuv yoter v'shalem in a hasid He's more complete than the guy who's automatically good-natured. Because in his nature, he actually wants to do bad and it's a harder struggle for him to be good. And so that kid deserves more praise. And the Rambam says, you know which one's right? Who's right, the philosophers or the Chazal, our rabbis? The Rambam says, they're both right. How can they both be right? The Imam says it depends which type of mitzvah you're dealing with. If it's a mitzvah that's rational, what we call mitzvot sikhliyot, says the Rambam, then over here, like as an example, think of a rational mitzvah. Think of a mitzvah that's very logical and makes sense. Don't kill. Don't steal. So here the Rambam says, that when it comes to something that's logical, it's actually preferred to be good-natured. The person that wants to kill but doesn't, there's a flaw in that person. If you have the want to do bad things and you don't remove that want in your whole life, you never got to the level that you're able to 
only bless people and be positive. If you always remain with bad thoughts and bad character, that's a flaw. The goal of all of these mitzvot is not to just not do them. <clears throat> it's not just I shouldn't steal, I shouldn't kill. Hashem wants me to remove the entire thought of theft from my dictionary. I shouldn't even think of wanting to kill someone. That's the highest level. That's the level that many of the great scholars, that uh, many of the Chachamim reached. So this is the famous Rambam. He says, when it comes again to rational mitzvot, it's better that you don't even want to do the wrong thing. But when it comes to mitzvot, shim'iyot, mitzvot that are not so lo lo logical. As an example, Shabbat. Do we know why we have to keep Shabbat? Kosher. Do I know why I can't eat pork? So over here, a person who wants to, but doesn't, is actually a higher level. Okay, so as an example, when you're walking by a store, and you smell the beautiful cheeseburger, a person, the Rambam says, the guy who wants to, wow, oh man, I wish we could eat that, right? person that wants to and doesn't is a higher level. That's a higher level? Okay. Very nice. What does this have to do with us? It says over here, al says the Be'er Yosef, we can answer, that Yitzchak knew both of his kids very well. He wasn't fooled by nothing. But he also knew that each one was very different. In Yaakov, who ra'a ish sadik mitvo. In Yaakov, he saw a kid who was good natured from day one, a goody two shoes. He just sat and he learned and he listened. And whatever the teacher said, he absorbed. This was the type of kid that Yaakov was. But when he saw Esav, the Pasuk says, Vayetze harishon admoni. What does that mean, admoni? Esav was red. You know what that means? He was red. Esav in his nature, he was, he had tendencies of red, of blood. It was an amazing Gemara in Masechet Shabbat. Let's learn a little Gemara together, okay? Okay, here we go. Hi, man. This is Masechet Shabbat, page 156. One that's born on Trey Beshaba. One who's born on the second day of the week. Okay, anyone here born on a Monday? Okay, find out. If you were born on a Monday, the Gemara says, Yehe Gevar Ragzan is going to be short tempered. <laughs> That's definitely my husband, Rabbi. Okay, he definitely was a Monday. Okay, fine. So, someone who is short tempered, Monday is a short tempered. What's the reason? Why? Why is Monday short tempered? Because on that day, the second day of creation, the upper, says the Gemara, the upper and lower waters were divided. So it's a day of contentiousness. Okay? Interesting. Machloket. Gemara continues, one who's born on the third day of the week, Yehe Gevar Atir, will be rich. However, Vezanai Yehe, but they'll also be promiscuous. Okay? So Tuesday, maybe rich and promiscuous. Why? Because on that day, what was created on the third day, anyone know? It grows, third day was vegetation. Grows a lot, abundantly. But it's also mixed together without boundaries between the grass and the plants. So it's a little bit promiscuous. Okay, interesting. Can the Gemara continues? One who's born on a fourth day of the week. This is Wednesday. Wow. Yehe Gevar Hakim will be wise, venahid, and enlightened. Okay? So any Wednesdays over here? If you were born on a Wednesday, then you're going to be smart. Okay. Why? What is Wednesday? Because that's the day that the lights were hanged in the heavens. Right? Wisdom is like light. The, the sun and the moon. Okay, Thursday. You're born on Thursday will be a gomel hasadim will be a person who performs acts of kindness. Okay, beautiful. Why? What does that have to do with Thursday, the fifth day of the week? Mishum de ibrero be dagim ve'ofot. Because on the fifth day of the week was when fish and fowl 
were created. How are they sustained? They're sustained by the kindness of Hashem. We don't feed fish. We don't feed birds. We feed land animals, but we don't feed the fish and the birds. The fish and the birds, they get the sustenance from Hashem. So that's the idea of Gimlut Chasadim. Who was born on a Friday? The Gemara says, Yehe Gevar Hazran. What does Chazran mean for the word Hoser? He'll be someone who's going to seek out mitzvot. Right? Because Friday is a day that we're looking to go to mitzvot. We're running to prepare for Shabbat. Okay? He's going to be a person that's constantly seeking. Seeking and seeking specifically mitzvot. One who is born on a Shabbat. Any Shabbat babies here? Okay? Find out. My, right? One who's going to die on Shabbat. Gemara says... Beshabta Yemut will die as well on Shabbat. Al de Ahilu Alohi Yomaraba de Beshabeta. Okay, because they they had to desecrate Shabbat on behalf of this baby. Interesting. And Amaraba ve Kadishara Bayit Kere, he will have great holiness because he was born on a very holy day. Okay, very interesting. So different days of the week, different temperaments. Gimara then says, Rabbi Hanina once told his students, we're gonna read a little bit in English. Poku emaru le lebar levai. Go and tell the sons of Levi, who was Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi. Lo mazal yom gorem. It's not the constellation of the day of the week that determines a person's nature. Ela mazal sha'a gorem. But it's the hour that you're born that determines your nature. So it's not about what day of the week. It doesn't matter what day. It matters what hour. So as an example, one who was born under the influence of the sun will be a radiant person. He will eat from his own resources and drink from his own resources and his secrets will be exposed. If he steals, he will not succeed because he will be like the sun that shines and is revealed to all. One who was born under the influence of Venus. Oh, this is, okay, whatever hour of the day that is. If you were born under the influence of Venus, will be a rich and promiscuous person. Okay. One who was born under the influence of Mercury will be an enlightened and expert man. One who was born under the influence of the moon will be a man who suffers pain, who builds and destroys, and destroys and builds. And here's uh, one that, okay, one, one more. One who was born under the influence of Saturn. Okay, again, you have to ask which hour is each you know, planet. But if a person was born in the hour of Saturn, this is in the Gemara, by the way, from, it's unbelievable, 2,000 years ago, will be a man whose thoughts are for naught. And some say that everything that others think about him is for naught. One who's born under Jupiter, which is Tzedek, will be a just person, a Tzadkan. And here we go. Here's the one that everyone knows. You ready? This is a famous one. Hayman uh, de Ma'adim. If one is born under the influence of Ma'adim, which planet is red? Mars. Will be one, says the Gemara. You know what that means? If you're born in the hour of Mars... Yehe gevar ashed dema. It'd be someone who spills blood. Okay, now this sounds very bad. So you mean to tell me, Rabbi, that if you're born in a certain hour, you're going to be a murderer? If that's the case, then why are the murderers punished? The murderers, they shouldn't be put in jail. It's actually not their fault. They're born in the hour of blood, they're born in Mars. It's not their problem. It's God's fault. So here's what the Gemara says. Beautiful. Amara Vashi. Iumana Iganava Itabaha Imahola. Says Ravashi. You don't have to spill blood to do bad things. He can be a blood letter. Giving blood is also spilling blood, right? Work for uh, hospitals. He could be a thief and kill or a slaughterer of animals. You can remove blood from animals and give shechita to people. You could be a circumciser, a sh- uh, brit milah. And so, Rav is telling us something very powerful. Just because you're born and it's in your nature to do things that are blood-like, right? Some people love blood. Some people are pyromaniacs. Some people are, right? People lead to different things. Because you love blood, it doesn't mean that you have to be a bad person. A lot of good things to do with blood. Rabbah, by the way, said, I was born under the influence of Mars. 
and I don't do any of those things. I don't kill. I don't, I'm not a shochet. I don't slaughter animals. I don't circumcise children. Abaye said, yeah, but you punish and you kill people in Bedin, which is an extension of blood. The Be'er Yosef says, based on this, my friends, something comes out very powerful. Yitzchak realizes that his son Esav is Vayetzeh HaRishon Admoni. Esav comes out, what's Admon? Adom. Esav is born in the influence of Mars. Whatever hour that was. And therefore, it's interesting because his brother Yaakov was a twin, but he must have been in the next hour. It must have been right by the cutoff. Esav was born in one temperament and Yaakov was in the next. And so Yitzchak thinks that because Esav was born in that hour of Mars, he thought that for sure he has that in his nature. To He has a, a liking. He's, he's, he's pulled towards blood. And therefore he realizes that if my son is using his trait of negativity, of blood, of red, and he's using it for a good thing. He's going to kill animals. And not just to kill animals. But what's he doing afterwards with those animals? He's bringing them to feed his father. He's doing a mitzvah of kibura va'em. When Yitzchak sees that, he says, Wow, my son is a huge sadiq. My son is born with a nature to do negative things. And he's doing great things with them. And so if you have a son like Esav and you have a son like Yaakov, which one's greater? Yaakov is the goody two-shoes. Yaakov is good from day one. But the Rambam taught us that the person that actually desires to do negative things and controls themselves are more praiseworthy. What a big lesson, by the way. How many times maybe we want to do things that are a little bit ugly. We have tempers. We yell and we get annoyed and we have... And people sometimes make a big mistake and they're very upset at themselves. What's the matter with me? How come I have these thoughts? Why am I so disgusting? Why am I so attached to these things? And the Gemara is teaching us, the Rambam is teaching us, that actually you are holier than the tzaddik that doesn't have these thoughts to begin with. The fact that you want to do the wrong thing and you control yourself, you're channeling. And this is what Esav did. And so Yitzchak loves Esav because he sees in Esav a perfect person, a perfect that was born with Mazal of Edom, of Mars, and whatever that means, a person that was born under the influence of doing very bad things. And instead of giving in, instead of just giving up, instead of, you know, that's very easy to say, okay, this is who I am. Instead, Esav takes who he is and finds a way to use that for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Finds a way to take all of his ugliness, all of the blood and everything. And he does mitzvot. He kills animals. He goes and he gives his father to eat. And so over here, Yitzchak sees a great potential in his son Esav. And that's why he thought that he was even greater than Yaakov. So he calls him over and he wants to bless him. But Abotai, take a look at the blessings that he gives. The blessings are very interesting. He doesn't give him the Birchot Avraham. You know, Avraham was given the power to give blessings. And Avraham gave that power to his son Yitzchak. Now Yitzchak has to give those blessings of Abraham over. Who does he give it to? So what people don't know is that when he calls his son Esav to bless him on that famous day. And he says, go out and get me some food so that I can bless you. He doesn't end up giving the blessings of Abraham. Because that's not, that's not what this was about. Because take a look at the blessings that he hands over to Esav. Or to who he thinks is Esav. Really, Yaakov ends up getting them. We know Yaakov comes in and he takes them and he, from his brother. He makes believe he's Esav. And by the way, just another proof that um, Yaakov knew who Esav, uh, excuse me, Yitzchak knew who Esav was. When Yaakov comes in, he says, my son, is that you, Esav? And Yaakov's like, oh, yeah, 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 it's me, I saw, right? Yeah, it's me. 
So he says, let me feel you. Now, what was it that caused Yitzchak to be suspicious? Why did he doubt? And then Yaakov comes and he feels him and luckily his mother put hair on his arms. So he felt the hair. But what was it that made Yitzchak Ah, very good. Very good. Hazak Baruch. He, it's, not the, it's not the voice. Remember, they were twins. It's very likely they sounded the same. Right? Many people tell me that I sound like my brother, Rabbi Yaakov. And I always tell them back, yes, Hakol Kol Yaakov. <laughs> That's what Yitzchak says. The voice is the voice of Jacob. But what was it that the voice, what voice of Jacob? It can't just be the, the sound, the tone, because they, they sounded the same. They were twins. Rashi says, Yaakov used Hashem's name. And Yitzchak's like, whoa, time out, red light. Warning. Does not, Esav does not use Hashem's name. <laughs> this cannot be Esav. This can't be him. Why would he use Hashem's name? Esav doesn't use Hashem's name. So again, you see, that Esav didn't use Hashem's name. So Yitzchak wasn't fooled into who he was. He didn't think he was a scholar or a rabbi. He knew exactly what kind of son Esav was. But he also realized that if this is true, then Esav is maybe greater than Yaakov. Because whereas Yaakov is born as the ideal goody two-shoes child, Esav is born with a temperament and he's controlling that temperament. And he's not only controlling but he's using it to do mitzvot. And so he decides to bless him. But what does he bless him with? He calls him over and he says, right, may Hashem bless you from the tal hashamayim, from the dews of the heavens, umishmanei ha'aretz, the fats of the land. My friends, if Esav is a hunter, why in the world does he need dew? How does that help him? doesn't help him and the answer is it doesn't you're right and that's what Yitzhak was hoping Yitzhak was actually blessing his son hoping that he would change his vocation he was hoping that he would get a different career Esav you're a hunter and that's great but I bless you that you from now on your form of Parnassah should be through farming and that's why he says and it's very precise he says to his son, I'm going to bless you. Ve'ata. And now, listen well. And now, please take your bow and go get me some game. Now. Now and never again. Hopefully this will be the last time that you ever have to use hunting as a form of parnasa. I would much rather that you be a farmer. Why? Why is farming preferred? The answer is, any farmer knows the answer. Because to be a farmer, you need a lot of emunah. You know what it's like? There's two types of professions today. There are professions that your salary is set from the beginning of the year. You're going to get $100,000. That's what we're paying you. You know that from the beginning of the year, every month, this is going to be your check. You're not nervous because you know this is how much you're making. And then you have salespeople type of people. Commission-based, not salary-based. Real estate or sales, whatever it is. person that works in commission needs a lot more faith. Because you know that if you don't make the sale, if no one buys something, you can end up making six months without getting paid. In general, people that have commission-based salary, right, as opposed to set-based, people that have commission they have, a, they need, they need a lot more emunah in Akadosh Baruch Hu. A farmer needs a lot more faith than a hunter. Yeah? Because a farmer needs the rain. It's not up to you. Matter of fact, by the way, we know that Lot was a farmer. Lot was a shepherd, excuse me. He had a lot of sheep, right? But where does he go? Where does he go? He goes to Sedom. Why does Lot go to Sedom? The Pasuk is very clear. When he saw Sedom, he saw it was on the banks of the river. There was so much produce. 
you didn't need rain. Avraham living in Israel is very difficult. Israel is a place that you got to pray to Hashem. You need emunah. You need rain. If it don't rain, you don't have grass. You don't have produce. You don't have anything to feed your animals. What are you going to live on? Living in Israel is too, too demanding of my spirituality. Lot couldn't handle that. So what does Lot do? He goes to a place that you don't need emunah. He goes to Sedom. Over there, I have a set salary. There's the rain, there's the river. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to you know, irrigate all of the crops. Everything is set. I don't need Hashem. It's very hard to live with Hashem. And this is what Yitzchak was hoping Esav would stop. Now you're a hunter. Hunting is up to you. You don't really need Emunah to be a hunter. You need a very good aim. Right? You got to be precise. You go out, you find the animal, you kill it. You don't need Hashem. And Esav, you're not using Hashem's name really so often because you don't really pray to Him. Now, you're, again, you're using your traits for the good. But Yitzhak was hoping with being, by being a farmer, maybe you'll learn to rely on HaKadosh Baruch Hu more often. And so he gives him a bracha to have from the dews of the heaven and from the fats of the earth. Unbelievable. This is all what was going on in Yitzhak. Yitzhak wasn't fooled. Yitzhak knew exactly who Esav was. He knew what kind of kid he was. He knew that Yaakov was the scholar. He knew that Esav was the hunter. But he was impressed because he thought that Esav was using his hunting, which was his nature, but for positive things. The truth is, Rivka, she was able to see through that tiny deception of Esav. And why is really a separate class. In short, though, we have to remember, Rivka grew up in the house of Lavan and Betuel. Rivka knows exactly what a cheater looks like. This is her brothers, and she grew up with this. When she sees Esav, she sees right through him. You can't sketch me. I grew up with the, with the guys who wrote the book. My brother's Lavan. You gonna, you gonna lie to me? She knew exactly that it was all a charade. Esav was just using it just as a, um, as a front. If it was legitimate and he was really doing those things because he really was controlling his nature, then Yitzchak is right. Rivka was able to see a little bit the, the fakeness that existed in Esav's actions. Either way, I think this is tremendous chizuk for us. Again, sometimes, you know, there are many Yaakovs in the world, but many of us are not Yaakovs. Many of us are Esavs. We have tendencies to do bad things. And we have to remember that actually Yitzchak prefers those type of people. Yitzchak prefers the Esav. Of course, as long as it's legitimate, as long as it's sincere, but if it is, which we are, I don't think we're fakers, we try our best, then that's actually who Yitzhak prefers. And the only reason Rivka argues is because she saw that Esav was all a charade. But in theory, this is what the Rambam is teaching us. And so we shouldn't be ashamed if we have certain tendencies. We have to realize that this is how Hashem made me. It's my job to figure out how do I use, how do I use my talents? We have talents and a big mistake that people make and again, something that we've said before. But when they become religious, sometimes people, they drop who they are and they decide that it's time for them to become someone different, someone new. And that's not the goal. The goal is to stay who we were and instead using the Torah to be able to guide and channel all of the midot that Hashem gave us. If it was blood, instead of embarrassing or killing, to now use that blood to help, to heal, to be doctors, to be, you know, shochets or butcher, whatever it is, but to use them, to use all of our midot of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Okay, we'll stop over here. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.